Uh, so how did you get on board Catch-22? Um, I think I, well, I had done a film with uh, George and Grant, who was the producer uh, before, called Suburbicon. Mm -hmm. So they're, you know, wonderfully. They called you up. Yeah, they're wonderfully <laughs> loyal and kind and invited me. And when they said Italy, I said, yeah, I don't even know what you're doing, but I'm coming, <laughs> for sure. They did not mention Catch-22, it's just come to Italy. Yeah, we're yeah. going to go to Italy next. Okay. Yeah. Where do you want me to sign? <laughs> I, I don't care. Yeah. Uh, so were you familiar with the book and yeah I mean I actually I had not I was familiar with it I didn't mm -hmm. know of it and but I had not read it and I did mm -hmm. read it of course did my due diligence and did my research and studied and watched the film and you know I think you have to prepare yourself for all of that because it's going to come up you know I think a lot of times there's a lot of films where sometimes you don't want to watch beforehand or you don't do it because you don't want to or you read a book and then you get mixed up did is that in the script is that in the book you're not quite sure so I feel like, but this one, you know, a lot of people really studied in high school at a certain time. I mean, it stopped at one point, but it was studied in high schools. It was, you know, in the movie, although it was not very successful at the time, mm -hmm. had become it's sort of... It's hard to adapt. Yeah. Of course. Oh, yeah. it's difficult. Yeah. I, you know, I don't know if anybody's ever going to nail it at any point in time and get it just right mm -hmm. in that particular tone of writing. But I think... You know, th it was really fun, and I thought it was a real fun challenge. You know, it was interesting to see where it was going to go, and I think the important thing about that, which when I thought about it, was, you know, there is so much in there. The dialogue, there's so much and so many details that I immediately from the beginning decided that I thought I needed to keep it very authentic. Mm -hmm. You know, it was important to keep what and and honor that World War II, the look and the time period too. So you didn't get distracted. You know, we you can make little things, but I thought this one was really important to keep it truly inauthentic to mm -hmm. itself. So what kind of research did you do into like World War II uniforms? Yeah, and... I mean, it's exhausting because all through the war, as, as we all know, it, you know, it started and we weren't a part of it. And then once we joined up, it was, and we were set in 1945 and um, in the um, Mediterranean. And so it was, you know, at that time, you know, even there's videos, hundreds of thousands of young boys were being called up, and, and especially in, you know, in um, the Air Corps. It was very busy at the time. And so when you start reading all these articles, you really get in deep, and it becomes very personal. I think a lot of things we study, you surprise yourself about how much, you know, you, and it's not, and at that time, there's not a lot of visual research, per se. I, there was, you know, more so than a lot of things at that time, but it, you start reading stories and you start becoming connected to individual people and it becomes, it really tra it becomes very emotional and you really start to realize how many people all over this country, you know, went and fought for it and it, it's, you're, you're moved and you're, then you get into a different place in time where you want to make it truly authentic to honor all of these people that were part of something, you know, that gave us where we are today. Yeah. So that was really, really important for me and so emotional. How, how many of the uniforms did you make and were, were they just sourced? Well, so I really wanted to keep it authentic mm -hmm. and I have done a little bit of military in the past, but I also talked to a lot of you know, military people and I know it exists. And mm -hmm. so I did a lot of research and because there were so many gentlemen and unfortunately they didn't live very long, you know, especially yeah. in the Air Corps, you know, they sometimes didn't make it to their 25 missions. So there is a lot of, <coughs> excuse me, excess stuff out there and there's and you know the military doesn't throw anything away or it didn't at the time and that's another thing too about 45 is we they had made a lot and style started to change but it was also towards the end so it felt like you can use they didn't get rid of anything if you were a new crew coming and they had something in your size that was from two years ago they were going to give it to you you know so we had a little bit of a lax space to be able to use you know crossboard so I was told that I could go to the, you, you know, we were going to Italy, that I could get it in, over in Europe. Well, that's where they were, so they left yeah. it there. It's not there. Uh -uh. Liars. So Exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, you can source it, but people are very large collectors. I mean, it's really special to a lot of people. So finding enough with 350 backgrounds that had, you know, were with us almost every day and have multiple changes. And, you know, so it was difficult. But I think, and so I came back to the United States. And, you know, the wonderful costume houses here have a, they're buried, you know, in boxes. Oh, and, wow. you know, Like in, untouched? In, yeah, in the, mm -hmm. in the basement. There was dead stock, there's old stuff, and they really, really helped a lot. And we pulled together. And we, we also sourced all over Europe. Mm -hmm. But it was, you know, I, you had to come home and to, try, to really get it and get it right. Wow. So how many would you say you bought or sourced? And, oh, well, yeah. we, uh, you know, we 
rented probably, you know, most, a majority of the 350 we made for the principals. We mm -hmm. made all of our leather jackets. Mm -hmm. But all of the, you know, the, there's they, they all wear light harnesses and, yeah. and things in the plane. Those are all original. So a wow. lot of the clothes are original. A lot of the uniforms that they wore in the parades are all original cadet uniforms or service uniforms for those young boys and then you know, they're, because the good thing about the boys in Sardinia that played a lot of the background, they're known to be um, boxers and jockeys. So they're quite small or, you Your know, frame. Yeah. yeah. And so much more like the young men of the time in mm -hmm. 1945, because you had to be a certain size to fit in those planes. They're mm -hmm. not, they're tiny crawl spaces. It's very small. Yeah. So we were really, really mm -hmm. fortunate that way. So when you found the untouched uh, dead stock, mm. you had to age and mm. distress them, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. So what did that entail? That's my favorite part. And I have to say, you know, I, I it's very important to me because I feel everything that, that's lived in and touched has a life of its own and it gives a little bit of that story and where they feel. And so the Ital the, we had a wonderful Italian clue that are almost artists themselves, but it's, you know, it's a little bit different. We are, we have so many safeguards over here in terms of environmentally safe and also for health consciousness. It's not the same there. It's very dangerous, but you know, cement mixers, you throw your clothes into those a lot. They also use this thing called tree lax, which is in dry cleaning, but they soak the clothes 100% and it just gets, it's the smell, it, it, I don't know how they, I don't really don't know how they're alive, it's really dangerous. But they soak them head to toe, every single piece, so every single background, wow. every, every in all their multiple changes. And then, then you go back in, they don't do as much painting, we do a lot of painting here, mm -hmm. they do, but I really, there's a lot of painting that's done and a lot of aging and sometimes it's very difficult depending on what you're shooting on and you can read it that way. And texture is really important to me. So sanding and actually getting your hands in there and doing it is really makes a big difference, I think, personally. To you know, when you're on camera, you can see those little mm -hmm. things that might make it a little bit more personal to yeah. each actor or mm -hmm. character itself. Well, did a lot of the characters, like even the background people, have multiple changes? Like yeah, so multiple all the versions because you have to dis distress at, for like certain points in the yeah. story. So yeah, so they all came in, and it, the funny story is, you know, we always ask actors, you know, to bring you know undergarments or. I think there was one mother that bought, they all had the same undergarments, but there's only one place in, in Sardinia, I think. But So they come in, but we had like multiple, many, many days, and you you would kind of figure out who your pilots were. You know, say we had 50 pilots, and you but you gave them pilot gear, and they had, they would come every day, and it just sort of like, oh, in you, you know, 101, he's gonna mm -hmm. be this today. You know, so we had to rotate them. So they all had about three or four changes. And it was, you know, some days you didn't have all 350, it yeah. depends, but you know, we just needed the mechanics that mm -hmm. day. But we wanted to change them up and make them feel like mm -hmm. we were living, they were living on the base and we were all living yeah. together. Well, sure. the other thing is it's like most of them, they're wearing the same uniform. Mm -hmm. So how mm -hmm. did you uh, try to individualize it for them so that they all look like, appear like real people mm -hmm. as opposed to just like, you know, a stock pilot? Yeah, you know? sure. So I think what's really important is with your actors, and I think, you know, they, you became so personal with all of these backgrounds. They were so much fun and just so kind. But you also allowed them to have their, you have, we had boards everywhere, you know, just photos. So they could kind of, they're so young. So they wouldn't know anything, hadn't done their own research. But they could start seeing it, and then they feel like they connected. Maybe they picked out their guy. And, you know, you kind of give them their space. And they create their own, you know, their mm -hmm. rules and the pants are pulled up and you have all those details. But it was interesting to kind of let them be themselves. And what would they do, you know, if they were, a, you know, a 17, 18 year old boy on an air base with no sort of parental guidance and no control? Because when you're in some place like that, you know, you don't have, there's no four star general, there's, no, there's nobody that important. So it's kind of becomes a little lax and the rules are let go a little bit. So I think it was fun to have those boys make their own yeah, choices, like you know, and yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and you know, they got, they got in trouble sometimes, but they, <laughs> but they were good, you know, they really, it was really important to them, it became, they, it was a job, and, and, but they loved every minute mm -hmm. of it, and made friends for life, it's, yeah. it's special, it's really special. Um, the tone of the book and the show is obviously very different from your standard war story, mm -hmm. you know, which is usually very solemn and serious, and this is obviously a satire, and the rule itself is ludicrous, <laughs> and I kind of felt like the, I, I, I think you know part of it is also the cinematography, but like the clothes, there was more of a brightness to them, like mm -hmm. the tans, the yellows, and the greens. Mm -hmm. So, did you was that your goal to try to like evoke the lightness of the story through the clothes? Well, I just didn't. You know, there is 
there's a lot of sadness around that time if yeah. you really think about it. And I really wanted to make it important that, you know, again, it didn't need to feel like they'd been there a Vietnam situation mm -hmm. or something. They hadn't been there that long. Yeah. As you know, we see them go. And so I wanted to keep it youthful and a little bit fresh, but also there's no place to wash those clothes, you know, mm -hmm. so we didn't either. So that feeling of the brightness would come because it wasn't, we didn't want it to feel so somber. Yeah. You know, we didn't want it to feel like it, they it, were, it felt like sun kissed. Right. Like you're in Italy. Yes. Yeah. Well, that, that was <laughs> yeah. part of it too. Yeah. And keeping it warm mm -hmm. rather than cooling it off. You know, the tech, that was a real yeah. important, the way we teched everything, because if you cool it off, it sometimes feels a little bit, you know, like sad. Yeah. And we didn't want it to, we didn't want to be sad in the beginning. Mm hmm. Or not to the end. Yeah. <laughs> well, for the three uh, principals, um, Yasserian, Cathcart, and uh, Shaiskov, uh, I love that you could kind of see their personalities reflected in the looseness of their clothing mm -hmm. because uh, with Cathcart, he's wearing all these like oversized uniforms and, you know, he's like a sycophant and very indecisive. <laughs> and then you have Yasserian who's like stuck in the middle. He's you know, properly dressed, but mm -hmm. nothing too tight, nothing too loose. Mm -hmm. And then, like, Shai's Goff, he's so by the book and strict, and then his clothing feels very constricting. Yes. So how did you go about designing for the three of them? Well, you know, it's interesting because um, Joseph Heller, who wrote the book, um, he, there's a picture of him that I researched, and Chris Abbott, who plays the role, looks strikingly similar. It's very eerie and interesting. And so when I saw that, there, but there is a nature to that character that he writes about that is... You know, it's not that he's, it, 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 it's not, he's not pushing back. He's following the rules, but he didn't, you know, he's not He was so, trying to get out. Yeah. yeah, but it wasn't, he still knew he had to follow the rules. I don't mm -hmm. think boys at that time knew that it was, it's not as easy to break the rules. You know, mm -hmm. they were following the rules. And then, you know, Kyle is just so much fun and he's so entertaining. And, you know, he kind of felt like he was going to be a gunslinger. You know, that he was, <laughs> yeah, you know, he's come from the South and that he was going to carry that on. And that he was in charge. And so there were no rules. I mean, he, in his mind, he was in charge. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And, and being disheveled and just feeling like, you know, all, all feeling as though he, you know, was in control and mm -hmm. didn't he didn't have to do anything and he was going to tell these boys right. And then Shaiskov was trying so hard, yeah, to be, you know, the boss. Yeah, and, then, and yeah. so it just striving that hard and he followed every single rule. That's why he was pushing them, you know, every detail about seven inches here and, you know, the walk. And so it was it was not hard, you know. And you know, George, you get one fitting, and so. It's, you, just you didn't give him the bat suit, so that's, yeah, he's happy. I tried. Yeah. <laughs> tried to give him nipples, but no. But it was, you know, it's very, um, but, you know, I think they also carried it off, too. You know, I think once they start moving around, you know, you get in a fitting, and we all say that, they start walking around in it, and, mm -hmm. you know, and then you also know where to tighten it, and you don't tell them, or you know where to let it out, and you don't really tell them, and then, you know, and that gives them a little bit of character. Yeah. Uh, so what are you working on now? I'm actually working with Tracy Ellis Ross. Lovely. To, I'm working in a movie wow. here in town called Covers. Yeah. Ooh, really fun. fun. You get yeah. to like stories uh, and yeah, passions. Yeah, I know. Yeah. She's, yeah, very helpful, yeah. But it's nice to work in Los Angeles because it's been a very long time, so it's so wonderful. You were just you know. in Italy yeah, last year. That's so, yeah, I'll go back. 